All right, welcome back. This is uh, going to be another one of those fix it in post kind of situations. I think the last time I started off by playing, I think the last session was I was playing a bit angry, trying to go after that uh, rot erd tree in a uh, terrible, terrible way to play this game. You need to, as dumb as it sounds, you sort of got to find your zen and, um, you know, just, just play that way. So... With this, you know, then we found this tunnel here. Um, I think it's near the Altus, um, Altus Plains, whatever the, the highlands are. And at the end of the last session, I sort of got embarrassed by trying to kite a soldier and then realizing, you know, he had, you know, a whole army of dogs on him and I got caught up on a, a rock and all sorts of things happened and it was humiliating. So we're going to see if we can get through this uh, this time a little more smoothly. I don't even know what those cracked crystals do. I'm obviously it's a, uh, I'm wondering if you can get that white thing on the way down. I wonder if there's a way to fall and just sort of mash the grab item button on the way down, but who knows? Anyway, I'm not sure what the cracked crystals do. It's probably a mage thing that I'm almost certainly never going to use, but, uh, Let's see if we can give this another try. I feel like I want to know where the dogs are coming from. I don't need to kite anybody at the moment, so I'm going to check out this this hut. And it's kind of interesting. It's a little like you know, it's a little like uh, environmental storytelling. You got like the the zombie dogs eating the. Um, the <laughs> I got a flame sword and I accidentally hit. Um, you know, explosive barrel. So I guess that's a nice touch. <laughs> Doesn't have to just be a flame. If my sword has the flame uh, effect on it, it does the trick. I'm going to go back to the mace because, you know, these guys just resist, you know, weapons other than blunt pretty well. And I got to say, I it's hard to believe that in my earlier playthroughs of this. One complete on the PlayStation 5. I did another partial on PC just to see what it was like. I, I never got a blunt weapon going. I always struggled with those. I struggled with the crystal things that we ran into a couple of sessions ago. Um, I just accepted struggling, and I don't know why. I just I knew what the answer was. I knew what they were weak to. I just never thought about uh, building one up. So I feel like it's time to go down. I feel like I've, the last time before I died, I sort of cleared off that far path there on the high level, so. I'm trying to figure out a way to, you know, when you're coming down and you know there's a crowd, I always try and find like, you know, back corner, some some kind of isolated space to drop down into. Like taking the ladder down is gonna put you right right in the middle of everything, it seems like. I appreciated that it gave me the backstab, even though technically he wasn't even facing me, but can't hear I'm gonna drop a little of my get out of jail free card. <laughs> Now, I used the stairs to sort of make sure he couldn't lunge at me a little bit. Part of my thinking was maybe I get cute and just try and backstab a couple times to heal instead of using a potion, but that, that felt risky. And as I said, like, I really like those amulets, those medallions, but they can be a little bit of a... I don't want to say a crutch... I mean, yes, obviously a crutch. It helps you explore longer without having to refuel, so to speak. But it can be sort of like a temptation. You sit there thinking, ah, maybe I, I don't drink the potion. See if I can... You know, the guy up ahead is just a regular enemy. It's not anything special, as I accidentally drink a potion. Um, you know, and it, it might not be... It might sort of encourage bad 
habits or you know slightly risky behavior so you gotta you i, I mean i need to keep it in check um because i can be I, I get myself thinking along the lines of okay let me see if i can push this a little bit i think i just walked away from a crafting material i don't know if i go back and get it So sort of the blessing and the curse of those um, backstab to replenish medallions. Again, sort of my my. I don't actually have OCD. I don't have it, but that my sort of tendencies are to always collect everything, even if I, I know I'm never going to use it. I just, it's it's sort of. On this playthrough, because it's being recorded, I tend to really tamp down running around. Every time I see something on like a regular playthrough, I'd have to go get it, no matter what it was. And here I'd try and be better about ignoring everything. I actually like this little touch here. You know, he's got the combination of the pick and this flamethrower, and it reminded me a little bit of sort of combining two enemies from the original Demon Souls. You know, there's... um. One of the worlds is sort of this really, really run-down, depressing mine. And there's two, you know, there's two main enemies you fight there. One are, like, the miners with the picks. And one are these sort of... Man, I'm going to forget their name. They sort of wear borderline, like, clown outfits. Um, overseer? I, I don't know what they're called. And I, and I should remember. Anyway. They, um... You know, the, the the miners have the picks and the overseers, whatever they're called, have like these flame attacks. And so it feels like, you know, those those enemies there sort of combine those two ideas. Okay, so I do make it back and get it. Uh, so that enemy sort of combines those two ideas into one and it's kind of, you know, it's, it's nice sort of seeing... Um, To me, reusing ideas in a Souls game isn't a bad thing because I love them so much. So, so here I got to decide. Like I'm rocking, you know, a decent number of Souls. And oops, I didn't mean to hit the map. And so my goal is always like, can I spend them before I go lose them in a boss fight? Now the trick is. I have like 15, 16, and I'm looking now to get to 22. And I'm not 100% sure I have the runes to get there. So probably what I should have done is not done any at all. And um, I, I realize that now. Uh, and so I, I think what I decide to do is I decide maybe there's some upgrades or something I can spend them on. As for the fix it in post, uh, you know, I was recording something, you know, I'm doing this thing with um, a guy named, you know, I mentioned Black Lodge Trivia Night, uh, you know, with Patrick O'Leary um, and Matt Peterson, who hosts the uh, History on the Table podcast, Dad, uh, Desert Island Dads, I think, Desert Island Dice, I forget what the other one's called, but he has a couple podcasts and, you know, we were doing something for Black Lodge Trivia Night the other night and, you know, the things you can do now with sort of a home setup, audio-wise or video, whatever you want to call it, are pretty impressive, but it can be a little in, uh, complicated. It's just a couple of things you have to remember. So I set up something new for Black Lodge Trivia Night, and I forgot to undo it before I recorded this. Essentially, I added an audio channel and forgot to isolate that audio channel to only track one or three, I forget which one, it doesn't really matter. But so what I ended up doing the first time recording this is I have my voice and the game audio mixed together. I also have the game audio separately because that was sort of a holdover from my original settings. But when I added that additional channel, I forgot to isolate it away from my voice. So I was trying to decide what to do. The, the in-game audio is pretty loud, but you could sort of make it make out what I was saying but in the end I just decided you know what let me let me try fixing it so 
what I'm sort of learning now, and which is one of the nice things about doing all this, you know, I get to learn different things, is how to patch in voiceover in uh, DaVinci Resolve. And, you know, I was looking at this, it looks like, you know, I feel like I'm hitting some roadblocks here on upgrades. I know Smithing Stone 3 is one of them. And there's, you know, in a normal playthrough, I would, I would start to get the temptation. Let me just Google that because I, I can't remember where I get those. I can't remember where I get the bell bearing to buy them, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, my shield can't be upgraded. And so <laughs> my plan to spend the souls is to not lose it is uh, it's not coming together. But um, anyway, yeah, so I'm sort of learning how to uh, patch VO in here on DaVinci Resolve. It's not, it's not too complicated. Um, I gotta say, like the free ver I don't know how much is in the free version of DaVinci Resolve, but it all seems pretty crazy what it can do. Looking at this blade, I sort of get now why it has like a high strength requirement. You know, it's like it's made out of a meteorite, so it's gonna have more heft to it than a, a normal blade. And I'm sitting here tempted to this and the the one next to it, the moon veil. Um, because it's not gonna really impact you know, I don't need the low-level somber smithing stones really anymore, but I also know that I'm probably never going to switch to an intelligence build. I guess if I do, though, I can I can do it then. But it looks like I'm really striking out. I can't even do the backup ones, like the bow and the um, pack of wolves. So I came back here, couldn't spend basically any souls, so I'm going to have to go risk that boss fight. Yeah, I guess it's good to check these guys. I feel like I've already gone through it, but and I haven't added anything to their inventory. So yeah, I'm just going to have to go in and hope for the best. Of course, you know, the problem with this is I kind of forgot where I was going. Maybe I should, when I when I do a run back, maybe I should come up with a marker to remind me where I actually was. I said it before, I, I love that they added markers to this. I really wish they weren't limited um, to really keep track of, of, of your journeys around the world. Again, I don't know why I'm picking this stuff up when I'm supposed to be doing a boss run, which I believe is right down that ladder past those guys. But again, that's just, you know, again, I just have to make myself not grab stuff. So I guess it's time to just go for it. Let's see what's on the other side of the uh, the golden fog. So these trolls, like at this point, shouldn't be that tough. And I think I start to switch to my sword, but then realize it's like a stone thing. So I go back to the blunt weapon. Which is doing much better. And then, of course, <laughs> get stomped into the ground like paste. But, like, these trolls on paper should not be... I mean, they can obviously still kill you from, with stuff like this. Um, and it stomps if you're not careful. But, it, you know, I'm doing plenty of damage. I'm completely failing to avoid his stomps. You know, having a good shield there helped. Let you tank a little bit even when you don't have heavy armor on. But again, like I'm just walking into every single one of his attacks. And so what you're experiencing here is this is the power of overleveling. You know, I'm not playing this well at all. But I've jacked up Headless so that Headless can tank, take some hits. And 
when I'm not fumbling around like a moron, I'm doing decent damage with my strikes. So this is purely over leveling getting me through this fight. It is not skill at all, as you can clearly see. And because of that lack of skill, I'm leaving Headless out there hanging a bit. I mean, again, it's almost like I have no memory of 12 seconds ago when that exact attack knocked me down. Finally, I avoid one stomp. Almost got greedy there. Yeah, that skill didn't win that fight. It was just... putting in the work earlier. Always make sure there's nothing laying around. Sometimes I miss stuff. All right, so we can call that one done. Forget some of the stuff that, oh yeah, okay. So I'm sort of exploring around a little bit. Then I remember there's like places I've been that I, you know, sort of walked away from. Um, you know, that's, um, I think a grave. So I'm going to skip that, but I remember there's some, I end up remembering that there are some places with bosses that I could probably give a second shot trying. For a little while, I'd actually forgotten I'd never finished this one. So I end up traveling here because, you know, I still got a ton of souls and I'm wondering if maybe this blacksmith has something. I'm looking for basically smithing stone threes. Um, I sort of rest here just to remembering that I might actually have enough to level up. And so what I'm doing at this point is I'm pumping points into mind because I know at some point, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but there's like a, a, a summon ash that's going to cost 132 FP. So at some point I need to get to 132 so that if and when I acquire that ash, well, not if, I mean, hopefully I will, more when, I um, I have the FP ready to go so I can just start using it immediately. Now this guy, you know, he sells like one and two smithing, uh, somber smithing stones. So I guess I can go crazy on that. A couple threes and fours, but again, I'm looking for some higher numbers here. So yeah, maybe it's time to go back and clear out this cave. Truthfully, when I ducked back in here, again, I tried to get on my horse like a, an idiot, but I didn't quite remember what I was um, going to be facing. And it sort of starts to come back to me here. <laughs> oh, just... Classic line for Mad Men. As I run past the rats, I wasn't thinking about you at all. Um, but you have to take care of them because they can come up behind you when you're trying to actually do what you got to do. So I think the last time I tried this cave, I think there's some magicians and some groups. I didn't have the red main flame, so I did have Horfrost stomp, but I don't think that did much or I wasn't using it well. So I'll finally get to try it against this crowd. And that's not bad. It's got a pretty wide arc if you can sort of get them just on the far edge of the effective range. I 
now that most of them are gone, I don't know if I ever like fully explored this cave because I was always in such a rush to not get killed. So I know I sort of like ran around like a maniac before, but I think now it's good that I'll get a little bit more of a chance to take my time. But to what I was saying earlier about like trying to be clever, you know, I realize my health is down, but more importantly, my FP is down and I'm going to need to summon ashes for whatever the boss fight is. So I'm like, oh, maybe I can sort of be too clever by half and just backstab my way to refilling it instead of worrying about a potion. But I don't quite get there. And again, it's sort of like a risky, it's a risky mindset. I mean, what I should be doing is just look, I've got two potions. That's why they're there. Don't worry about just beat, beat the guy to death and move on. Then I remembered, yeah, that guy up on the steps, I, I underestimated how tough he would be. But I'm still thinking, oh, maybe I can get a backstab and refill that FP. Like, this is what's, like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, just understand that you're going to need to drink the potions and get out of there. And so, yeah, so this is good. We finally can... I'm doing a lot of things wrong here. But we can finally give this a shot with a proper blunt weapon. So all I have to do is pick one and hope Headless picks the other. I was going to go for this one. Headless then came over, I guess. So I'll stick with this one over here. And you can see it's going way better. You know, before I was just chipping away here, you don't have to deal with, like, getting through the crystal outer shell. You just... God, that's a lot of attacks. You just plow through it immediately. And again, you deal with these enemies, you know, like a lot of bosses that come back later in the game. And you deal with these elsewhere, and I always really struggled um, because I was never smart enough to just get a blunt weapon going. And it's not like I didn't have this flail on previous playthroughs, and this one's been working pretty well. Get a little greedy there, but it works out. Alright, so now I just gotta be careful and, and hopefully we can tag team this one. kind of interesting about this is that there's a, I'm seeing a second golden door there usually a boss room is just a boss room and all you do is um so that one went much better than the first time and so seeing this elevator you know this this dungeon's located underneath the Raya Lucaria Academy. And so I started to wonder, like, is this actually like a like a backdoor into the academy proper? Like the way you can get around like Stormvale Castle, can you also get around needing to get that key from the dragon? And it seems promising, given how high up we're going, um, that it's definitely going to be taking you somewhere inside the academy walls. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess, is there a back door in? You know, you look on the map, you're on the map, you know, you get the title card. But as far as I can tell, it ends up being sort of, you know, you're so far above the academy and it becomes sort of like this isolated area with no actual way to get in, which I get, you know, like I fully understand. At the same time, um, there's a part of me that thinks that's kind of cool. And again, you know, nice, I'll, you know, I'll grab a spell, never use it, but I'll grab them.
Yeah, so there we go, make my way out. Try another cave. So here I gotta remember, you know, you gotta run along the right edge or else you trigger everybody in the tunnel to the left. And then there's a bit of a gauntlet ahead that I remembered. You, know, you sort of have to roll your sprint and roll your way through. So there's two fights at the end of this cave. One is the sort of invisible assassin that we had to get that special torch for. The other one, which I think we're going to try first here, is the mage. That really proved a lot tougher than I was expecting. So first things first, I, you know, I know he's a mage, and I know I've got some talismans that give me some magic protection, so... Might as well try those. Um, you know, I'm giving up the backstabs for healing and stuff, but that's just... Again, in a one-on-one -on -one boss fight, I can figure that out on my own. You know, just drink potions, who cares? Oh, right, last time I didn't have my flame. It's doing a decent damage. This spell, man, I just when I think they're gonna be done chasing me, they keep coming. They don't they don't go away as quickly as I And then of course it gets another one off and then <laughs> And then I back into a rolling snail. So let's try that again. Let's see if I can do this <laughs> without screwing up. As I couldn't really tell how much of an impact the um, talismans had, but might as well stick with them. So what I th think about here is like one, getting some damage over time, but two, I've noticed in the past, like these throwing knives have decent ability to stagger. So part of me is wondering like, maybe that'll prevent some of those spells from getting off or give me a good opening or something. But he rolls, fa he does stagger, but he rolls really fast. And so it doesn't quite work as well as I was hoping but it is good to get you know he's definitely poisoned so he's got some stuff going on and of course you know headless is going to town so I just have to <laughs> worry about all that going on backstab always helps I should have dealt with that snail like this is you know, throwing knives, no throwing knives, whatever. This is 
better approach, somehow jam up the magician, get Headless dealing with it, then I can clear the room. Um, that was an approach I should have been taking the whole time. So now there's sort of a debate. Do I go back and make another run? But my souls are not any... So I just go for the, for the next guy, I think. Now I need this, this is the torch that's gonna let me see the guy, but it means I'm gonna have to give up my shield. Now I know I don't have the stats for it, but that's okay, because I'm not looking to attack. Uh, and then, you know, like I said, I've heard that the wolves do a decent job here because they sort of, Headless can tank and do decent damage. But what I really need is, because these things stagger a little easily, what I need is just constant pestering. So I've boosted up my wolves. I've never actually tried the wolves in this kind of situation, so. It was kind of fun to give it a shot. But I do have to be careful because I'm going to be down a shield, so I, I can't afford to be hit. I mean, I guess I can guard with the torch, but... Now again, sort of the weird thing is... Do I have to be holding up the torch to see? No, okay. The ashes can see enemies even if they're invisible. So I didn't I don't need the torch for them to attack, but I do need it if I'm gonna help out. And as you can see, like the wolves are definitely keeping it occupied, but they're not doing a ton of damage, and you can see it sort of interrupted an attack there that was gonna shoot a ranged bleed effect at me. Um, but they're definitely keeping him occupied. There's the range bleed attack. Again, I got a little greedy there, and I need to be more conservative because this is going fine, and I don't need to be a hero. Especially here at the end. And the wolves are actually tanking a lot better than I would expect. Maybe this guy just doesn't hit very hard, but I feel like... And there we go. I feel like they had some durability to them. So it's kind of a neat, um, a, a neat talisman. It sort of gives you a little bit of stealth. Um, that's kind of a nice touch. But I'm going to go back to my default setup now that I'm going back out there. Again, you know, I'm going to keep dumping points in the mine so I can get FP up to 132. I'm at 116, so, I mean, there's a little ways to go, but, um, you know, we're getting there. It's kind of a nice, you know, thing. I, you know, I love games that let you sort of go back and kick ass, if that makes sense. That's something like, especially like the original Oblivion, I feel like they sort of designed away from, and it's sort of disappointing in a way where everything kind of scales. Um, 
so here what ends up happening is I, you know, for dungeons, I put a sword on it when I still need to do it. For ever jails, I put a skull on it when it's done and I sort of get those mixed up and I am going to go check back on something I probably already did. So yeah, so now I'm just standing around like an idiot when I realize what I did. Again, still love this section of the, the game map quite a bit. So now it's time to start fishing for... Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm ready to do that, but maybe I... I think what I needed for that was like a gesture. It's not like a boss I need to fight. I feel like I've been pretty good about the starting areas, but I guess it's always good to double check the artwork just to make sure there's not something egregious you completely overlooked. Now there's definitely, you know, the Godskin guy that's at the bottom of this tower that I'd forgotten about and I was gonna try something you know as a you know you can craft something to help out with that and I was, was jumping over there you know and we're gonna I was gonna try and craft it because I think I have the materials I've been collecting what I believe I need and so I was just gonna make the basically their sleeping pots and give it a shot but <laughs> but the game crashes and I gotta say I was having a lot of trouble with some I, I don't want to blame the drivers for this in particular, but the last NVIDIA drivers that I upgraded to gave me a lot of issues with other other programs. I wonder if it has anything to do with that. That just seems like some kind of connection issue. But anyway, feels like a good time to stop, and we'll pick up that tower next time and see how it goes. Take care. Thanks.